What's up, explorers? Today, I'm gonna to be doing a different video than I planned on for my first Starfield video. But on day one launch, I had some issues playing the game. It was stuttering, the loading times were taking forever, lots of screen tearing and other technical issues. And I figured out what was wrong with my setup, which was mostly the SSD drive. But I wanna go over some of the system requirements that you're going to need to meet to play Starfield and how you can properly set up the game on your PC for the best playthrough. Dang it. By the way, we record these Starfield videos live on Twitch, not to mention the playthrough footage is recorded live on Twitch also. And if you wanna be a part of that, be sure to subscribe. Links will be in the description below so you can come hang out with me live. Looking to start streaming on other platforms as well, but for right now, you can come find me there. We'll talk extensively about the SSD drive and how it connects, but first let's take a look at the other system requirements. You're gonna need an operating system of Windows 10 or 11 with the updates, an AMD Ryzen 5 or an Intel i5 processor. You're gonna need 16 gigabytes of RAM. You're gonna need a graphics card that's a Radeon RX 6800 or an NVIDIA GeForce RX. RTX 2080. I happen to be running a 2070 and it still runs super smooth. So that might be like a high end requirement there. You're going to need DirectX version 12, broadband internet, of course, because man, uploading and downloading all these things takes quite a bit of time if you don't. Storage space of 125 gigabytes, and that's going to need to be stored on an SSD with the proper connections. Now, I do think that in the end, I actually ended up needing more than 125 gigabytes of available space. So give yourself a little buffer room there. And here's how we're going to be opening up our system requirements to see if you have what you need to play Starfield. There's two ways I like to do this. You can go down to the start menu and type in DXDIAG or Direct X Diagnostic Tool. Run that and it will come up with a list of things in your computer like Windows 10, the AMD Ryzen 7, which is good enough because they require the, the the Ryzen 5. And then it looks like I'm running DirectX 12. I thought I was running 11, but it appears I am running 12. And you can Google search DirectX downloads. That's a free download to upgrade to DirectX 12 if you're running something older than that. To find out your graphics driver, click on one of the display tabs. Yes, I'm running four monitors. Any one of those will get that display out for you. I'm running the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070 Super, and that is getting it done. It says you should be running the 2080 but I'm having no problems at all with my 2070 Super. The other way to look up your system requirements, and this is probably a little bit more common, and you can already see it written on my screen there, is type in system information. If I can type. There we go. And you run that, you're gonna get your system summary, which is gonna show you all the important things like what windows you're on, uh, which processor you're using, you can find your physical memory. And it, when you wanna know that graphics card, go over to components, come down to display, and you'll see right there at the top what graphics card you're using. And now we come to the solid state drive requirements. Now this one is what hung me up because all of my external drives are SSD, and I thought I would be perfectly fine using one of those to store this rather large game on. Let's bring up the task manager so that you can look at your actual system performances. This also shows you what's really going on with your drives. So one thing you can do is go back to that search bar and type in task manager. Hit enter, that's gonna bring up this window right here. Now this is of course the window that I like to use to auto close stuff that's causing me problems, but we're gonna click on the performance tab and you'll see a list, your CPU, memory, disk space, and all your different drives. Now, my external drive is actually drive E. The problem I was having with that drive is that it was plugged in through a USB port, and as it turns out, the external USB ports on my drive don't support the SSD speeds. So it's registering this MyBook as a USB device rather than an SSD drive. That's what was hanging me up. What I ended up doing was uninstalling the game and installing it on my internal SSD drive. Unfortunately, that's where I store all of my multimedia videos, 
and stuff. So I had to take some time and transfer all of those to an external. It took some time to free up the space, but it's only 125 gigabytes that you're gonna need to move over. So I highly recommend you make sure that you have an, ex an internal SSD drive or you have the proper connections to your external SSD drives to make sure you're not hitting a bottleneck. Cue dramatic music and then let the music cut out and freeze frame as we wait for a, a loading section to load here. If you're having issues with screen tearing, long loading times, if the audio isn't in sync with your actual gameplay, like all the sound just cuts out except for the bullets, or if you're in a battle and it just starts to stutter and pause and you don't know why you're getting shot and can't move, that's probably because you're running on the wrong type of drive. You either have it on a hard disk drive or you're running on an external SSD drive with the improper connections. But I just froze up. Waiting for the game to catch up. I like using the task manager feature rather than going into your actual drives because you can have those drives labeled SSD, but they might not actually be performing as a solid state drive and instead a USB drive like mine. So going in through the task manager allows you to see what's actually happening. And you'll notice those speeds as you play the game or you're installing the game, how they're affected. I had a very long installation process and even longer unpacking that game once launch took place because it wasn't installed on the right drive going through that USB bottleneck connection really took some time once you know that you have the proper operating system memory graphics card all those specifications are meeting the Starfield standards and that you have it stored on an SSD drive that is actually reading as an SSD drive you'll be able to play the game in some maxed out settings and it runs so incredibly smooth. If you have an external SSD drive and you want it to work for Starfield, then there's some things you need to know about how it ports into your PC. The website Old School Gamer says that USB 3 speed is five gigabits with actual potential speeds of 500 megabits per second. So that's just slower than the fastest SATA SSDs, but you won't saturate the SSD. In other words, your bottom bottleneck is still going to be that USB 3 port. If you want to do better than USB 3.0, then it's best to use the second generation of USB 3.1 which comes in at 10 gigabits per second. But for multiple drives, the transfer rate will be limited to around 700 to 800 megabits per second. And that's with a faster USB 3.1 Gen 2 interface. What all that means is that if you wanna be using an external solid state drive, you need to have the latest, fastest USB connections to get the most out of it or you can just move it to an internal SSD drive, which is like a direct connection. That's what I'm now running the game on. However, it required me to move a lot of things off of that internal storage drive to my external drive. In short, if you want the best quality experience while playing Starfield, then make sure you meet these system requirements and be using an internal SSD drive for simplicity or make sure you have the fastest USB connection for your external SSD drive. If you like this video or found it useful, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more Starfield content. I'm Run7 reminding you to have fun exploring, Commanders. I can't believe how many times I called it a solid state drive drive.